Hi, my name is Karthik Rangappa. In this video, let's understand the gamma of an option. We concluded the last video by posting a very interesting question. On what basis does the delta itself changes? Well, the answer to that depends on the gamma of an option. Before we discuss gamma, let me give you a good news. If you are a retail trader, then you can afford not to know about gamma. You can skip this video and look at the next video in which we will talk about theta. But I would suggest you spend a couple of minutes to learn about gamma because it's an extremely interesting option Greek. Like I mentioned earlier, the rate of change of delta with respect to the rate of change of underlying is captured by something called as the gamma of an option. Gamma is also called the curvature of an option. Gamma is usually expressed in terms of deltas gained or lost per point change in the underlying. Gamma is usually a very, very small number. This should be intuitive. Delta increases by the amount of gamma when the underlying rises and falls by the amount of gamma when the underlying falls. Did that sound confusing? Let me take a quick example to explain that for you. Consider this. Nifty is trading at 17,700. There is a call option at 17,700. Clearly, you should identify that this is a at the money call option. So roughly the delta is about 0.5. Further, assume that the premium for this option is 275. The option also has a gamma of 0 0.0006. Now, if you expect Nifty to fall by 200 points, what do you think is the new delta? I understand that's a lot of numbers that we've laid out, but let's think through this systematically. Firstly, this is a at the money call option. So the delta for this is 0.5. Next, we understand that for every one point change, the premium is expected to change by 0.5. We expect a total decline of 200 points, which means to say the premium is likely to change by 0.5 into 200, which is roughly about 100 points. The new premium will be the old premium minus the change in premium. That is 275 minus 100, which is 175. Of course, with the change in underlying, the delta has to change. We know that the gamma of this option is 0 0.0006 which tells us that for every one point change in the underlying, the delta should change by 0 0.0006 points. The total change in underlying is 200 points. So 200 times 0 0.0006 is 0 0.12. Therefore, the new delta is the old delta minus the change in delta, which is nothing but 0 0.5 minus 0 0.12, which is 0 0.38. Now think about this, it makes perfect sense. Initially, our option was at the money when Nifty was trading at 17,700. We expected Nifty to fall by 200 points, which is 17,500. With this fall, the 17,700 option is no longer at the money. It becomes out of the money. Therefore, going with the Delta narrative, the delta has to transition from at the money to out of the money, which further implies that the delta has to be less than 0.5. In our case, it's 0.38, so it perfectly fits the narrative. Of course, there are a few more things that are very important to gamma, but I wouldn't take up your time in this video for that. I would encourage you to go through the varsity chapters and read through the gamma. Please post your queries there, and as usual, I will be happy to get back to you with a reply. Now, before we end this video, I would like to touch upon three more things that you should understand about gamma. The first thing to note is that the gamma of an option is always highest for an at the money option. Therefore, the rate of change of delta is always high for an at the money option. On the contrary, gamma is lower for out of the money and in the money option. 
which means to say that the rate of change of delta for in the money and out of the money option is lower compared to at the money options. As an extension to that, never short an at the money or in fact never short an at the money and in the money option with an expectation that the option will expire worthless. If at all you intend to short an option, always choose an out of the money option to sell. That was about gamma. So far we've looked at the gamma and the delta. In the next video, let's take a look at the theta of an option. Key takeaways from this video are 